we take that time and divide it between an opening statement and a rebuttal. I don't think there'll be rebuttal unless the attorney comes losing in the door. Rebuttal is usually limited to five minutes. So you can go up to 20 minutes unless you want to reserve some time for rebuttal cases here. All right, you ready to roll? Yes, sir. All right, I approach. Here Please have the podium. What kind of dog you got there? He's a service dog. He's a Labradoodle. He's a Labradoodle. That's a cool looking dog. Okay, let's do it. Sick. First, I would like to thank Your Majesty, Your Honors, for allowing me to be here. May I please, Honorable Courts? Okay, well, just judges, by the way. Judges? Okay, well, that was my next question. If how would you like to be referred as to Your Honor, Your Majesty's, or? No, Majesty's is too much. Okay. <laughs> God Majesty. is okay, but Majesty's too much. Okay, well, Your Majesty, I would like to take this opportunity to allow me to evolve as an enlightened individual. This has been an erroneous journey with many barriers that I've had to overcome. On this day, November 16, 2022, I have reached the summit of this journey. My name is Ryan Lee Hayes, and I'm self-representing myself as pro se in this case. I will isolate, identify, and focus on three essential elements with three vital subject matters that have a way to desperately to grace this honorable court with. I would first like to express to this honorable court that I have had a total of four attorneys since my prior filing of this lawsuit in 2015. Rolando Guerrero, in 2015 through 2016 made a derogatory comment about my ethnicity and my parents to go to trial. That case has no lien that was associated with the case and the lead attorney was able for him to withdraw from the case. Mr. Lee Siegel, 2016 to 2017, during the discussion of settlement, I was advised that Mr. Lee Siegel has never taken a uh, personal injury case to trial that he specializes in security matters and foreclosures. During that time, it made me very uncomfortable to proceed and go to trial with an attorney that didn't have that much knowledge and in personal injury. My third attorney was Alex Stauro. I hired him in, two, in 2018, December to be exact. Mr. Stavro brought Mr. Keith Bowen as co-counsel due to financial hardship during the brink of COVID-19. During this time frame, Alex Stavro, physical business closed down. Uh, Mr. Keith Gohan advised me that he was going to have to now take lead counsel, and I informed him that I needed to speak with Mr. Stavro with several failed attempts. Mr. Keith Gohan withdrew because I did not sign a new client agreement with him. Mr. Keith Gohan did, in fact, give me prior notice, email, verbalized, and called me that he was withdrawing. Mr. Stavro never did it. He technically backdoored off, off of Mr. Keith Bowman's motion to withdraw, and I had, I had no um, awareness that he was withdrawing. With all due respect, Your Honor, I know this has been a long case. There has been three judges on this case. Ms. Claudia Eisen, she, um, there was a horrible accident that she got hit. Okay, uh, Mr. Daryl Manning and Ms. Uh, Honorable Emily Peacock. Nevertheless, I assume that there was alternative motives with the courts. The first subject matter that I would like to bring to your attention, Your Honor, whether or not the trial courts abuse its dis dis discretion in the appellant's motion for a continue for a continuous trial. Defense counsel will unwittingly portray a false strategic narrative as if they're accusing the appellant of abusing and strategically manipulating the courts. I am here before this honorable court to refute and dismantle the false narratives with supporting merits and facts. Yes, your honors, I was sanctioned two times due to two prior CME um, office visits. The first reason was because of with, with Mr. Lee Siegel. He withdrew from the case. I didn't have any legal knowledge of how to proceed with that. The second time was after when I hired Alex Stavro, time went on, he was trying to find a more medium place for me to go to for the CME due to the fact it was over an hour away from my residency. <laughs> the second subject matter, trial courts granting the appellee's motion for summary judgment, granting attorney fees, and denial of the appellant's motion for rehearing. Appellant, this is very noticeable in the argument, appellant failed subject admissible records for evidence. Alex Stavro was my hired attorney for over two years. Not one attorney did any type of discovery or requested any type of evidence for this case. 
Throughout all the exhibits, you can see that there's a plethora of documents that I have reached out to Mr. Stavro and Mr. Keith Goen asking what are the updates with my case. I was vigorously reaching out to him. I was open for communication. He constantly advised me that the courts are backed up. He hasn't heard from Mr. Keith Goen and just giving me a Heinzman stiff arm. <sighs> um, the, uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Hayes, let me, let me ask you a quick question. Yes, sir. Um, because what comes through from reading your brief and, and hearing your presentation um, is that you feel dissatisfied with the uh, representation that you got uh, in the course of your lawsuit. Correct. I wouldn't say, yes, I wouldn't just be just dissatisfied with the services, but just with the courts recognizing that as him being as having legal counsel, there's no way that I can reach out to opposing legal counsel and ask for evidence and so forth. I did my job as an individual trying to correlate with Mr. Stavro, any type of evidence. He was on the case for two years and I had no evidence. It took me to get six years of six large boxes to go through these boxes and come to the conclusion that no discovery was ever done. I had to hire our own private investigator to track down this vehicle an expert analyst for reconstruction and so forth. And these are all preliminaries that my attorney should have done throughout the course of my and, and, and I, I, I hear I hear your, your complaint. I was trying to put it kindly oh, satisfied. Okay. Uh, well, regardless, that's not something that we can really pass on in this case. We can't really make an adjudication. Uh, this isn't a malpractice case, right? This Correct. is this is the underlying personal injury case. Um, how are we supposed to tie? How are we supposed to tie in what you claim was just bad service by your lawyers to the ruling that we actually have to decide here, with, that we actually have to review, which is all the, the underlying first thing? I'll be straightforward, Your Honor, and I will not try to mirror myself being an attorney or someone knowledgeable yeah, with case fine. law. Yeah, fine. I do not. Um, the only thing I'm advocating for is just common tongue, common reasonable decisions by. Your Honor, um, there's nothing that I, I could have done. I, I understand that uh, I am in a bit of a situation, but what I'm asking is for the courts to understand that it's just not me that is uh, receiving such a harsh punishment on a financial hardship. There's other physicians. My medical bills are over $300,000. I've had seven surgeries. There's trying to incur $73,000 of attorney fees and so forth. I'm the president of a nonprofit organization. I, I don't have money and I'm about to graduate my graduate school and just coming out $100,000 in debt financially and then with this. It's just, um, it's a lot to take on. And I have been active throughout my whole representation of this case. I do understand that um, evidence was not discovered from my attorney. And that has me in this situation that I am. And unfortunately, and well, we'll take a look at everything and you'll get our ruling in the mail. But is there anything you want to argue about why the trial court made a mistake that you haven't yes, had a chance? To I would about? like to ask why, when we had our hearing for motion for reconsideration, that Honorable Emily Peacock she uh, instructed on the record that she would not uh, grant a motion for continuance. I was truly not advocating for that, I was asking for additional time to retain. A lawyer. I technically had 130 days from that hearing to retain an attorney. This is when COVID-19 was flourishing through our society. No attorney, attorneys weren't even picking up phone calls. Ms. Lupe, the director of the Florida Association, she gave me over two dozen referrals. She personally went outside of her own network, wrote a judge, I uh, wrote a letter to Ms. Emily Peacock advising her that she gave me her complete arsenal of resources and not one attorney was willing to accommodate me and, and take up this case before the August date of trial. And that's another thing, Your Honor, and hopefully this is the last thing. I did have a scheduled um, trial date. It was August 16th, 2021 with me prior to having counsel. When they withdrew, then it got taken off the docket. I'm advocating for due process, fundamental fairness. I had a trial date and that was taken from me and I got an arsenal of motions and just got buried in um, 
legal proceedings at that point with no representation. We, we understand your predicament. Uh, answering questions, by the way, is outside the scope of what we can do. We can't, we, we're not here to interpret what happened and explain it to you. I'm, I, I wish we were. Uh, so anything else you want to add to your argument? Uh, I think that is about it, Your Honor. Just argument, fundamental fairness, and just due process. All right. We will take another look at this and we'll, we'll get something in the mail in, in due course. All right. Sure. Good luck. Thank you. Take care of your Thank you. Thank you. Am I good to go? Yeah, you're good to go. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, am I approached? No, you can't go past the podium. What do you want to no, say? Not approach, I mean, come back here. Yeah. Am I able to request for a verbalized default by any chance since closing? It time? doesn't apply. In this okay. I'm sorry okay. about that. <laughs> it would be nice. All right, thank you. All right, take care. Bye bye. No. Okay. All right, folks, we're going to go to yeah. case number two Fornello versus La Roche et al. Thank you.